Well, good day and hopefully welcome back. Today I just wanted to do a short video on this Motorola, I guess a bag phone. These used to be known as. Um, <laughs> uh, I picked this up not too long ago, just uh, out of curiosity to have a look in, inside this transceiver, see uh, what, what it looked like. Um, we have a uh, RJ45 connector to the the handset here, just a phone, keypad, and there are, you know, a variety of these made, but a lot of these um, share a lot of similarities, including the uh, the firmware that's on these. I've snipped off the cigarette adapter and uh, just put on this barrel jack adapter. Uh, these take 12 volts. They come with lead acid batteries that. Are at this point in time are going to be completely dead so I got rid of that. I got rid of the bag as well. Um, also they come with a little antenna like this which I have I have an adapter on here uh, a BNC adapter now. Um, these, this is a I think a proprietary Motorola connection on these so you gotta get an adapter if you wanna um, hook anything else up to here. Uh, the antenna has seen better days but uh, it looks it's, it's, it looks like kind of a a quarter wave uh, monopole antenna. They just kind of uh, are using this as the ground plane. Probably just a piece of coax. And here's the center conductor. Um, let's see, this is these are inches. So I don't know. It's uh, you know a little over three inches for that. And the uh, missing the end piece of the antenna. Although I think I have it somewhere around, but uh, shouldn't shouldn't affect the use. Anyways, I picked this up and I thought it was a pretty, a pretty neat thing. I have a few notes here on it. Um, I think this is uh, it's a Motorola. It's, I think this is the mechanical serial number. I just have that's that's uh, my serial number that I have. These were manufactured in uh, Libertyville, Illinois, apparently, and I think they're pretty much all made there. These are analog phones. Um, they operate. I guess it was the 1G network at the time, or the uh, advanced mobile phone system. And uh, you can see it was introduced pretty early on, and uh, it had a pretty long life of 25 years. And there are, of course, mobile phones that are going to be uh, capable of full duplex operation, which, which is, is pretty neat. Um, if you're from the radio world, you don't really get that anywhere. Um, of course, they're uh, not super high power, up to three watts, which is is decent. You know, if you're you know hitting kind of a, a repeater like tower, that's enough, um, and they're going to be all over the place. But it's a, it's a decent little amount of power, and um, if you have one of these and you're interested in uh, experimenting with it a little bit more, there's a uh, resource called the Motorola Bible, which is it's probably been around for a long time. But um, uh, phones of, of this kind of age, I think up to, uh, I'm not sure when they stopped putting the firmware in here, but this, this firmware that you can kind of play around with. But um, this is a, a 96, 1996. Uh, and I think in 95, they, they started changing the firmware. So I have a, a kind of a little bit older one has some limitations but uh, you can still uh, play around with it and have some fun. Um, so before we go any further with that, um, to be able to play around with these you want to put them in test mode. So there's a variety of different ways but I only have experience with this one. So let me take the cover off and uh, we can take a look at the insides and we can um, look at uh, what's required to put these into a uh, kind of uh, test mode. Um, traditionally, to put them into a test mode, you have a, a, a pin header here, and uh, this this particular one. I don't know if we'll be able to see that, but uh, there are markings uh, for, with all the pin numbers on it. You can kind of just barely see some of that, maybe, but uh, it, it's pretty it's pretty small, pretty tough to see. But um, so it'll actually tell you which pin is which, like 21, 22. So um, to put the, this one into test mode, 
you have to uh, there's a test mode pin and you pull it down to ground and I'll open it up and I'll show you how I did that with this one um, this particular model uses let's see if we can find that here the Torx bit uh, T10 so let me open this up and I'll be right back okay we're back screws removed Let's look at the internals um, I can't tell you too much about about them here um, a bunch of kind of older stuff uh, but you know a lot of its uh, well you know what probably all of its surface mount um, so we obviously have the uh, power amplifier here ton of connection going out and uh, let's see if we can oh you know what I have a few more screws to remove I'll be back again okay back again removed uh, the internal screws holding the board down and also the uh, power amplifier to the uh, heatsink um, if I had to guess I, I would guess that this is the uh, Motorola this contains a Motorola firmware here well at least part of it right these are all custom Motorola chips um, so let's uh, remove this and that will bring us to the underside here a little bit of uh, heat sinking here and uh, a little bit of compound there not much probably dried now this doesn't get too hot from what I can tell I don't run it to full power here though um, all right let's take a look at this header here all right so these this is the the uh, pin header here and um, these are a bunch of capacitors across the pins and over this capacitor this is between this is I believe let's see pin 20 and 21 don't remember which is which pin 20 or 21 is ground and uh, pin 20 or 21 is uh, the uh, test mode pin so you want to pull that down to ground and that will put the board in test mode and since these no longer operate um, on the uh, cellular network I would like to have mine in test mode permanently so I've just put a little uh, what is this an 0805 or an 0603 I'm not sure <laughs> can't remember I think it's an 0603 could be wrong uh, uh, just zero ohm jumper resistor over this pin and that'll put into test test mode um, traditionally this would have been done through this uh, header here uh, with a special uh, adapter but I didn't I didn't want to modify this It'd be kind of probably tough to modify so we just gone in and done that and now this is permanently in test mode so let me put this back together okay we're back here um, have it plugged in here 12 volts to come on obviously you're going to be transmitting um, you need a suitable power supply for this uh, I'm not sure how much power you do need but you probably want a power supply capable of at least a couple amps um, in test mode it'll come up like this and uh, created a little cheat sheet for myself um, so this is all from the Motorola Bible oh and here we have uh, yeah, the, the pins is a jumper but not to find which one is which okay so let's just put it in uh, standard default conditions here 0, 04 that'll just put you in just a normal mode um, something to note with these is the receive only works on uh, a few channels after 95 they got worried about people putting these phones into test mode and listening in on conversations so there's only a few channels where you can actually uh, where receive is open so um, we can uh, we can do that let's do that so um, so 
So we want to do 08. Turn to receive on. Okay. Let's do a uh, channel number. 11 channel number. So let's do 799. So. And um, I think we have to set the uh, audio path here. 35. Let's do 3. Here we go. 08 again. So we have receive on. Um, so let's turn it back off. 07. Okay. So, a little handy dandy uh, cheat sheet. Uh, just some of the basics. Let's go over just a, the last few things. Which models are supported with this firmware? Uh, that's a good question. This is from the Bible. Um, basically these models. I'm not really familiar with these, but even handheld uh, like flip phones of the day, you can you can uh, play around with uh, with this uh, test mode kind of open firmware. Um, so the operating frequency range we see here, uh, it's on the 850 megahertz cellular band. The split frequency, obviously you receive on one frequency and that would be uh, from the tower and you transmit on another frequency to the tower. Um, so you can't use these as is to communicate kind of phone to phone full duplex which is you know that'd be really nice but you can't do that as far as I'm aware. Um, it'd be nice if there was like maybe a hidden feature where uh, some of the channels um, the receive and transmits were uh, crisscrossed or you could do a reverse or something like that haven't found that. But the, the uh, AMPS phone system used a 45 megahertz split. Now I was thinking it'd be nice if you could use this in the 33 centimeter amateur radio band. Um, and people have made uh, transverters for that. And uh, I was kind of looking into that. Um, maybe we'll look into that briefly. Uh, the problem, another problem with using it on the amateur radio band is there's a uh, 25 uh, megahertz split most of the time. Some regions you can find up to 12 megahertz split in the, in the 33 centimeter band. So that's an 18 megahertz difference here. So that's, you know, probably significant. You probably have some desensing, uh, desensitization of the... Uh, receive while you're transmitting at uh, certain power levels if, if you know if the split's not large enough so that's you know potentially a problem but it'd be very cool if uh, well <laughs> if someone would uh, po possibly rewrite the firmware hack the firmware um, and also the hardware to uh, accommodate uh, the radio on the 33 centimeter amateur band wishful thinking but uh, pretty pretty cool idea if you could do uh, especially full duplex or something and maybe maybe like a simplex operation do full duplex um, you know talk to someone not too far away uh, as the phone was intended to in uh, full duplex very cool I'm not aware of really uh, anything like that that's done in amateur radio you know it's um, usually repeater work and uh, you transmit, you know, you're not full duplex. You transmit or you receive. You can't transmit or, and receive. So, it'd be very cool if that was able to be done. You can still obtain this hardware, um, but obviously it's uh, a bit more scarce as time goes on. All right, so let's just do a, a quick um, presentation of uh, this in. Uh, uh, maybe full duplex and uh, using, um, I'll use SDR and we'll, uh, we'll play around with uh, the, uh, the receive and uh, transmit. Uh, I'm going to put it into a dummy load here. Um, I don't know. This is uh, obviously a type approved uh, device, but uh, you're probably not supposed to uh, transmit in that band now. You might disrupt some current cellular communications that are used in the band. So. Without further ado, let's uh, jump over to the SDR and uh, see how this all works um, under this uh, test mode. 
Okay, we're back. Phone is powered up. Um, let's put it, uh, well, put it into uh, the standard default conditions. Go four. All right. Um, notice I did put some black electrical tape over this speaker here. Extremely loud. Have not figured out how to uh, quiet this down. Haven't really looked into it, but yeah, very loud. Okay, so let's set the channel. 11799. Okay, we should be on uh, channel 799. Um, all the frequency, corresponding frequencies are in the Motorola Bible. Um, actually, let me pan to that now. This is this is part of the Motorola Bible here. So, you can see we should be at uh, um, 848 there, 97. So, um, alright. Next up, let us set the power level. Um, zero for maximum and seven for minimum. So we're gonna set it to, uh, to start out with seven. I'm in a, I'm in a dummy load here. So um, there should be some signal escaping obviously, but I, uh, I don't know how, how much with the dummy load. So let's just start with uh, power seven. So 12, seven, okay. We should be at uh, minimum power. And uh, we'll set the audio path next. Let me put this in view too. Huh? Um, so the handset, that's what I have, is a handset. Um, I'm not sure about the other options. They may apply for different, uh, different phones. But uh, I do know that the handset option works with this one. So we'll do 35.3. Okay. Um, all right, let's uh, let's just go down the list. Let's uh, set the uh, uh, carrier on. We'll uh, key the transmitter here. O5, enter. Okay. Uh, I just saw a uh, transmission come up on the uh, SDR. Um, <clears throat> so it looks like it's going to work here. Um, let us uh, turn the uh, uh, audio on. So it's transmitting, but uh, it's not going to pick up any mic audio. So um, let's let's do that as well. So that would be um, TX audio, which is 10. Okay. And um, let's also turn on uh, the the RX here. Let's turn on RX on. And uh, on 799, we should again have that um, uh, receive should work. So uh, let's await. Okay, it's fairly loud. Uh, let's turn it down a little bit. Um, so that's a uh, 47 here. So I think 47.3 is probably good. Just to show that it works. So show that it has a full duplex uh, capability. Okay, so at this point, I believe it should be all working. Let's pan to the uh, SDR here. Okay, let me zoom in here. We have, uh, you can see up here, we have the, the frequency. And um, zoom in a little bit there. We have, uh, we could, let's maybe go down to two megahertz. Uh, there we go. And uh, let me unmute that and you can hear me through the speaker uh, into the microphone through the speaker so <clears throat> it was working quite well through the uh, through the dummy load nonetheless so and uh, what do I have this I have this set to 20k wide here I think well, I, I'm not sure of the actual specs, but it's um, 20k with does work. You know, obviously you're going to have uh, decreasing quality, lower fidelity if you uh, decrease the bandwidth here. I'm, I kind of thought that these were 30k channel spacing, but uh, I could be wrong on that. So um, I'm not exactly sure. We're pretty close to the. Uh, To the uh, transmitter. So um, let me just uh, increase the uh, 
the power here. See what that looks like in the dummy load. There's a lot leaking, uh, assuming um, it's pretty high frequency. So, um, so set power. So 12. Let's do 12 zero. Okay, a little bit more there. So. And I think I'm on a couple amp power supply here. So that is the the basic rundown. Let me turn off the uh, transmitter here. Carry off 06. And there we have it. Anyways, guys, hope you enjoyed the video. These are pretty cool um, transceivers. It'd be very cool if somebody would uh, hack the firmware to be able to put these on the uh, 33 centimeter band. I'm sure it's possible, but uh, you know, maybe fairly difficult, but uh, it'd be uh, extremely, extremely cool. So um, if you have one of these, try to put it in test mode, play around with it. I know we used to have one of these when I was uh, a kid and um, in, the, in, the, in the mobile, and we used it all over the country, going on road trips and stuff. So now we're down to, uh, newer technology and hey that'd be cool if you could uh, put these uh, um, also on amateur radio bands and you probably could as well um, using maybe two completely different bands uh, you know maybe 23 centimeter and uh, 33 centimeter or 13 centimeter who knows you would probably have to do some modifications anyways hope you enjoyed the video have a good day thanks for watching